Hi everybody, welcome to my seventh video on axial bars. In this video I'm going to talk about how to deal with an axial bar that has multiple things changing as a function of x, including E, the applied load, Q, A, and also the normal force will be changing. If you want to know something else about axial bars, feel free to check out any of my other axial bar videos. Alright, so let's just assume our Young's modulus E is changing as a function of x according to this equation here. Alright, so if we take x to start here, when x equals 0, it's just going to be an amount E0. Alright, so let's just plot this straight away on our E graph. E0. And when x equals L, the amount is going to be E0, 1 plus L. So if L was a number, it would be like, you know, 1 plus 4 if L was 4. Alright, so it's going to go up. Alright, so some material here and it's slowly getting you know, bigger. Well, not actually bigger, just a different type of material. Okay, so something like this. Nice and linear because x is just to the power of 1. And a Q as a function of x is going to start at x equals 0, it's going to be 0 at x equals 0, and it's going to slowly increase as we go along. Alright, so we're going to say q is a function of x, is some value, q0, times x. Alright, and area is a function of x. We're not given that explicitly, I'm just telling you it's L, and it's a radius R, so it's circular. Okay, so it's like a cone that's stuck on the wall sideways. All right, and also the internal force that's developed is going to be varying as a function of x. All right, so let's just go ahead and keep on plotting these graphs I've drawn here. So q is a function of x. At x equals 0, it's 0. All right, when x equals l, it's q not l. All right, so this one's also linear. Just like so. q not l. Now here's e plus L, just like that. All right, now, if you remember, we developed this equation that we're trying to satisfy all the variables for. It was this, d delta is n as a function of x, dx, or a as a function of x, e as a function of x, all right? So what I've been doing here is trying to find all of these conditions. So find n as a function of x, find a as a function of x, and e is a function of x. All right, so I've plotted the two things we've been given, and now we're gonna set out to find n as a function of x, and a as a function of x. So let's start with a. So I just said before that it was a circle, right? So the area of a circle is pi r squared, all right? So that means the area as a function of x would be pi, that's a constant, that doesn't change. And that's going to be the radius as a function of x. And that's squared. Alright? Now, in order to find an equation for the radius as a function of x, we need to basically plot or define a line that it basically is this line right here. Okay? So the radius as a function of x equals what? Okay. So to find a slope, it's basically y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you know, the good old slope. So if we take x equals 0 here, and to find a slope of this line, it's going to be y, let's call this point 2, all right, y2 minus y1, so the height here would be y, or radius in our case. So y2 is r, y1, that's just 0, all right, minus 0 over x2 minus x1. x2, at this point here, is L minus 0. Because x1, it's not anywhere. We define this to be 0. Alright, so that's our slope right here. R as a function of x equals to R over L times x. Alright, slope times x because the line is linear. So that's our radius as a function of x. Now, we take this and plug it back into here. The area of the function of x is equal to pi. 
Now basically that's this whole thing squared. So it's going to be radius squared, x squared over l squared. There we go. We've defined our area as a function of x. Right, so let's plot this. When x equals 0, the area is 0. Makes sense, right? This is a point. There's going to be no area right there. And it goes up quadratically. Up to here. When x equals l, it's going to be l squared. That's going to cancel out. So the area at the end is pi big R squared, which makes sense, right? Because the radius there is big R. All right, there we go. Now that normal force is a function of x, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing the whole time. We're going to make a cut. All right, and we're going to take a look. And in this case, we're going to do looking this way, all right? It makes it easier for a bunch of reasons. The first one is we can make this cut at a distance x away. All right, so let's just say our x is not just this little thing here, but actually x goes to here. Make our cut at a distance x away. And we only have to deal with the force on this piece, all right? We don't have to think about the reaction or anything like that, all right? So let's get a free body diagram happening of this piece. All right, we still have that applied force starting at zero and getting bigger. And now we're going to have a reaction. And then, okay, we have the directions. And now we do the sum of the forces, and the x equals zero. So it's going to be n plus, and it's plus because this force is, you know, going in the positive direction. And now, what's the amount of force we have here? All right. So with constant, we could just say, you know, q times the length of this, so the length x, right? But in this case, q is changing. So how are we going to deal with something that's changing? Well, we're going to do it, deal with it the same way we always deal with something that's changing. We're going to have to integrate it, all right? So we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals x. We're integrating our function. q is a function of x dx. And this makes sense because q is a function of x. All right, that would be in newtons per meter, all right? And dx, well, that's just a length, so that would be meters. We're left off with newtons. So it's summing up all these little tiny force contributions. So q at, a q at a point x times that little distance x gives you a tiny force contribution, and then you're adding up the next section of dx, the next dx, the next dx. All right, and you're going to get a total force, which is equal to that integral, and here it equals to zero. So our Q as a function of x is right here, Q naught x. All right, so let's just integrate that. N equals to the negative, because we put this on the other side, integral of Q naught x dx. And it's an indefinite integral. We don't want to evaluate at any point. So we just want to know what it is as a function of x. Ooh, squash is a function of x in there. The negative q naught x squared by 2. Alright, so let's plot this guy on our graph. Okay. Now, if you want to know what this value here is, we're just going to solve this equation for x equals l. It's negative q naught l squared by 2. Alright, not too terribly important to know. But, here we go, just like that. All right, now we found all the components of this equation that we need in order to integrate it to find our delta as a function of x or our total delta if we just evaluate delta as a function of x at x equals l. All right, so let's put all our components into that equation. Delta equals to the integral. Let's make it indefinite at first. We'll go put no limits on it as n as a function of x. Well, that's negative q naught x squared. Put the 2 on the bottom right away. And times a little bit dx. Let's put dx out here. Over e as a function of x. That's e naught 1 plus x. 
and a is a function of x. That's this guy right here. So it's pi r squared x squared technically over l squared, but let's just flip l squared to the top. All right, now we've got a bunch of constants here we can factor out, right? So delta equals to negative q naught, that's a constant. L squared, that's a constant. And over two pi e naught r squared. And we'll have to forget the integral. x squared over x squared one plus x dx. Nice and simply, these cancel off. The integral of 1 over 1 plus x, well, we can make a quick substitution, u equals 1 plus x, du equals dx, so we're basically integrating 1 over u, that's ln, right, ln, ln, all right, so we can evaluate that, delta equals to this constant times the ln of 1 plus x evaluated between x equals 0, and x equals l, all right? Negative q naught l squared over two pi e r squared. All right, and you do a little bit of math tricks and you get ln absolute value one plus x. We don't really need absolute value because x is never gonna be negative, all right? So that's that. Now, you might have noticed something if you're really paying attention here. What if x was 0 here? And I can't cancel it out. So that's just a little, you know, a little issue with this problem. So you can't really tell what's going on at x equals 0, but I had to dream up some function to make this question work. If you get an actual function for a test or something, it always works. So there's really, when I plot it at x equals 0, it's a little circle, a little discontinuity. But we'll just pretend that doesn't exist. All right, cool. So ln negative. So that's going to be going like this. Boom. There we go. Kind of a funny looking function. And this value here, well that's just going to be our integral evaluated at x equals l. Negative q naught l squared over 2 pi e naught r squared ln 1 plus l. Alright, so that's how we go through and solve one of these problems for areas and applied loads and areas that are changing. So we're basically just using this equation again and we need to find all the components of it. So we'll go through, do what it takes for the area. Sometimes you need to take a little bit of extra steps. The free body diagram, we we'll do the same thing. We we'll make a cut at a distance x away. We we'll express everything in terms of you know the forces. Sometimes we need to integrate the applied force because it's not a constant. That's all right. And then we integrate this equation here, delta, to find the total delta as a function of x. To find the total displacement at the very end, we evaluate it at the point x equals l. All right. Hope this example helped, and I hope to see you guys in the next video about axial bars.